Hello learners, welcome to environmental science course for senior secondary level in NIOS. I am Neelam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome you in this program. Dear learners, we have already given you an idea about humans, how appeared on earth, how they obtained their food, clothing and other necessary things from nature, how humans settled, started life as nomadic hunters and gatherers to begin a settled life and make shelters for themselves and also discussed about the reason of environmental degradation in module 1. We have also given you an idea about principles of ecology included organizational structure of an organism from organism to population, habitat, niche, speciation, succession. We have also discussed about various components of an ecosystem, energy flow through such as food chain and food web with and energy efficiencies, natural ecosystem such as terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and human modified ecosystem in details that is all for module 2. Given you an idea about human settlements and deforestation in module 3, now we will discuss lesson number 10 pollution, environmental pollution of module 4. During this program, we will discuss environmental pollution part 1. Environmental pollution is a topic of which we should all be aware because it directly disturbs our health and well-being. For this discussion, we have with us Dr. Ranjana Saxena, Associate Professor, Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. She has long association with NIOS. Welcome you ma'am. Thank you Neelam. Hello dear learners, as Neelam has just said that in this program I will be talking about environmental pollution. What is environmental pollution? Environmental pollution is addition of harmful, undesirable substances into the environment as a result of human activities. Environmental pollution is one of the greatest problems that the world is facing today. It will not be wrong to say that industrial revolution is indeed the main reason behind environmental pollution. Developmental activities such as construction, manufacturing products and transportation produces large amount of waste that leads to pollution of air, water, soil and oceans. It is also the cause for global warming and acid rain. Environmental degradation and pollution of water bodies not only cause health problems but are also responsible for loss of our crop productivity. All these developmental activities are the root cause of pollution. These man-made activities are because of fast population growth, rapid urbanization, excessive industrialization and use of pesticides in agriculture. Now what are the objectives that we are going to learn in this lesson? We are going to understand pollution, study the various types of pollution and in this program we will study air pollution in particular, its causes, control and ill effects, know the different pollutants that are causing air pollution. As I have said before, Pollution is addition of unwanted and harmful substances into the environment, thereby not only causing health hazard, but also causing harm to our agriculture and livestock. So, the most important thing that comes to our mind is, what are these unwanted harmful substances that are so dangerous for our environment? Well, these harmful, undesirable substances may be physical, chemical or biological which are unintentionally released into the environment and these are called pollutants. Thus, pollutants are transported by air or water, enters the environment, build up in the environment and they get assimilated by the environment and cause damage as you can see in this particular slide. You can see here that the addition of pollutants to the environment make the soil, water, air 
and other natural resources harmful or unfit to humans and other living organisms. These are also responsible for the loss of our crop productivity. Well, in this slide, it shows that there are different types of environmental pollutant. Some are persistent pollutant and some are non-persistent pollutants. Then pollutants can also be primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. Pollutants can also be classified as primary and secondary pollutants, biodegradable and non-biodegradable pollutants. Now what are primary pollutants and secondary pollutants? Primary pollutants are those which after their formation enter the environment and remain as such. For example, nitric oxide which is formed by bacterial decay or by lightning flashes becomes a pollutant if present in excessive amount. Similarly, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, etc. are all primary pollutants. On the contrary, secondary pollutants are those harmful materials which are formed by chemical reaction between the primary pollutants in the atmosphere or in the hydrosphere, for example, hydrocarbons. We can say that these pollutants are responsible for causing different kinds of pollution. Now what are these different types of pollution? Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, radiation pollution, noise pollution and not to miss thermal pollution that is also a kind of pollution. So here we can see what are the different types I have just mentioned, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, noise pollution, radiation pollution and thermal pollution. Let us now know about the cause and ill effects of each type of pollution. Let me begin with air pollution. Now the first thing is what is air pollution? Addition of pollutants into the atmosphere in such a concentration that may have an adverse effect either directly or indirectly on humans, animals and vegetation is what is air pollution. The main cause of air pollution are suspended particulate matter and gaseous pollutants. Suspended particulate matter is so called because these pollutants remain suspended in air for a long period of time. Their size ranges from 0.001 mu m to 500 mu m in diameter. Particles less than 10 mu m float and move freely with the air current. Particles which are more than 2, 10 mu m in diameter settle down at the bottom while those less than 0.02 mu m form persistent aerosols. Suspended particulate matter consists of smoke, soot, fly ash, dust. Some of the other suspended particulate matters are lead, silica, asbestos, cement, grid, etc. Fly ash is given out mostly by thermal power plant as a product of coal burning. Besides causing harm to soil and vegetation, Fly ash may cause heavy metal pollution in water bodies. Fly ash is now being used for making bricks and also is used as a landfill material. Lead and other metals too are suspended particulate matter that cause air pollution. I am sure some of you must be aware that tetraethyl lead is an anti-knock agent in petrol for smooth running of vehicles. The lead particles coming out from the exhaust pipes of vehicles get mixed up with air and cause air pollution. Lead mixed with water and food can create cumulative poisoning and have long term effects in children. Oxides of iron, aluminium, manganese, zinc, and other metals affect the physiological, biochemical, reproductive and developmental disorders in plants. 
during mining operations and metrological processes, these metals get deposited on the plants as dust. Now, having talked about suspended particulate pollutants, let us now see what are the various gaseous pollutants. In the slide, you can see the various gaseous pollutants which are nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen fluoride, methane chlorofluorocarbons, unburned hydrocarbons for example benzene, ethylene etc. All are all gases that cause air pollution. Having talked about the various causes of air pollution, let us talk about the various sources of air pollution. Sources of air pollution can be both natural and man-made. I am sure you all are aware of the natural sources. The natural sources include volcanic activity that releases sulfur dioxide and sulfur oxide and particulate matter, forest fire which produces carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide, lightning that produces nitrous oxide, anaerobic decomposition of bacteria which produces nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide. These are smoke, photochemical smog, ionizing radiation, radioactive elements, pesticides, heavy metals, automobile exhaust are some of the ones that we are talking about which are man-made. Now the question is why do we want to study air pollution? Well, the reason is it is harming our body in many ways. So let us now know about the ill effects of air pollution. As you can see in the slide, most of the body parts are affected. Suspended particulate matter causes breathing problems and allergic cold, aggravates asthma and bronchitis in patient, cause lung disorders as you can see in the slide. Pollutant gases cause irritation in eyes, throat and lungs. I am sure you all must have experienced it at some time when you were moving in vehicles or moving out on roads, liver, kidney, spleen and nervous system too are affected. Also causes gastroenteritis. Heart related diseases tend to increase because of these pollutant gases. Many people tend to develop terminal ailments such as cancer. Hydrocarbon vapors besides damaging the internal organs also cause cancer and interferes with the development of red blood cells. Gaseous pollutants not only affect our health, they also harm our plants. Degeneration of chlorophyll causing chlorosis in plants is one of the effects, falling of leaves, reduced growth of the plants, mottling on plants that is yellow spots on plants, low productivity in plants and in severe cases the death of the plant is there. Air pollution is also responsible for two major ecological problems, namely greenhouse effect and ozone hole. I am sure you must have heard of both these eco ecological problems. In the present slide, you can see the greenhouse effect. As you can see here, some of the solar radiations pass through the atmosphere. About half of the solar radiations are absorbed by the earth's surface as you can see here and some of the incoming solar radiations are reflected back from the earth's surface as infrared radiation which have a lower energy than solar radiation. The infrared radiations now which are trapped by the earth's surface cannot pass through the atmospheric gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor and chlorofluorocarbons. These radiations are converted into heat energy which brings about the warming of the lower atmosphere. The increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere then intensifies the greenhouse effect 
and leads to global warming. In other words, we can say that global warming results in increase in the temperature of the earth. The other ecological threat posed by air pollution, as I've just mentioned, is ozone hole. Now, this slide talks about ozone hole. We all know that ozone layer is very important, important for the existence of life on earth because it absorbs most of the harmful ultraviolet radiations of the earth, preventing them from reaching the earth. I'm sure you all know that ultraviolet radiations are very harmful to our body and may be one of the cause of skin cancer, sunburn, eye defects like cataract, reduced productivity of plants are some of the other ill effects of ultraviolet radiation. In 1985, Perman et al. found that the ozone layer has thinned over the Antarctica. Chlorofluorocarbons, nitrogen oxides, methyl bromide and chlorine are some of the ozone depleting substances. Chlorofluorocarbons are compounds used in refrigerators as a coolant. They are also used in fire extinguishers, in cleaning solvents and aerosol sprays. When these chlorofluorocarbons are released into the atmosphere, they react with the ozone gas present in the ozone layer and thus completely destroys it. Thus more ultraviolet radiation of the sun reach our earth. Actually, you know what is happening is that the chlorine present in the chlorofluorocarbons on reaching the ozone layer splits the ozone molecule to form oxygen, thereby reducing the amount of ozone. The reduction of this ozone umbrella or the ozone shield is known as ozone hole. We now know the various sources of air pollution. We also know the ill effects of air pollution. So, the control and prevention is in our hands. Air pollution cannot be fully prevented, but it can be controlled. Now, let us see how we can reduce this air pollution. Can we really control pollution? Yes, we can. And let us see how we can control air pollution. One, by making sustainable food choices. Two, making sustainable energy choices, making sustainable transportation choices, keep chemicals away from water bodies, recycling, reusing and reducing the waste. Most important of all is educating others. Now another way which is very important to reduce air pollution is waste management. Now in this particular slide, you can see that the most favored waste management is prevention and the least favored is disposal of waste by storing or burying. Reuse and recycling of waste material is an effective way of reducing air pollution that we all are doing now. How can we contribute in reducing air pollution? We as human beings, how can we as individuals help in reducing air pollution. The most important is to minimize the emission of pollutants at source only, which means selection of suitable good quality fluid, which is low in sulfur coal in power plants, use of CNG, in short, use of cleaner, eco-friendly fuel at home in power plants and in industries. Selection of suitable site, for industrial use, operational changes, which means employing eco-friendly industrial processing units. Then by installing devices in industries that will reduce the release of pollutants, devices like gravitational settling chambers, filters, electrostatic precipitators, scrubbers, inertial collectors, these can all be installed in industries to reduce air pollution. Use of tall chilney reduces air pollutants at the ground level. There should be a thorough management of combustion operations and proper monitoring of emission sources. 
Industries which pollute the environment should immediately be closed down. Besides industrial regulation, even vehicular pollution needs to be controlled. The best way to control vehicular pollution would be to walk or ride on a bicycle whenever and wherever possible. Use public transport like bus, train or metro or subway, whatever is available in the place you live. You can take advantage of the time to relax, read or catch up with the news. Instead of doing your errands over a span of few days, do them on a single day. Carpool to school or to workplace. And most important is to get a regular maintenance work done for your vehicle. Use pollution-free vehicles that turn on electricity or CNG. Some of the other preventive control measures are prevention of burning solid waste, Tree planting too reduces air pollution. So plant more and more trees and have a green belt area wherever possible. You can plant trees in your home also. And if you want to give a gift to your friend, you can give a potted plant. Eliminate deforestation. Limit fossil fuel use. Invest in alternative renewable energy strategies like the use of solar energy wind energy and geothermal energy, phase out the use of CFCs that is chlorofluorocarbons. Now you know why it is important because it is thinning down the ozone layer. Use energy efficient lighting and use energy efficient appliances. Now segregation of waste, pretreatment at source, sterilization of rooms, all these will also help in checking indoor pollution. Last but not the least, disposal of waste should be done in a scientific way. Some of the important most modes of waste disposal are recycling, preparation of compost, incineration, landfill and sewage treatment. Okay, thank you. Thank you Dr. Ranjana Saxena for sharing information related to environmental pollution. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. Nature's components such as air, water, forest and trees are resources exploited by humans. The root cause of pollution is the fast population growth, rapid urbanization, excessive industrialization and use of pesticides in agriculture. Pollutants are agents which are directly or indirectly responsible for environmental pollution. Air, water, noise, radiation and thermal pollution are different type of pollution of real concern. Air pollution is a result of industrial and certain domestic activities. Suspended particulate matter and certain gases like carbon dioxide, Nitrogen oxide, etc., are air pollutant. Air pollution not only harm our body and cause various disorder, it also affects the growth and development of plants. Use of cleaner fuel such as biogas, CNG, etc., prevent air pollution. Segregation of waste, pre treatment at source, sterilization of rooms, help in checking indoor pollution. Prevention and control of industrial pollution can be reduced by using cleaner fuel filters, electrostatic precipitators, inertial collectors, scrubber, etc. Use of chlorofluorocarbons cause damage to the ozone layer causing thinning of the ozone layer called ozone hole over the Arctic and the Antarctic region. Increase in global temperature or heating effect by greenhouse gases is known as greenhouse effect. Dear learners, this is all about Lesson 10, Environmental Pollution Part 1, we will come again to meet you with another program of environmental science. Thank you.